Well, it is such a great joy for me to be with my fa church family here in Cambodia. I love coming and seeing all of you. And it's exciting to see so many of you here today to worship Jesus. And I always feel so deeply loved and accepted by you. I feel like you just received me like a father into the family. And I just want to thank you for both my wife and myself for allowing me to be with you today. Uh, now God is doing amazing things through your church and your church leaders. I get to work with all your pastors and they work with me in doing the, the KLGN. And Every week they go out and train other pastors and leaders all throughout Cambodia. And God is doing amazing things through the training that they are giving to these other pastors. Already, through the churches and the pastors we've trained this year, we've seen thousands of people become born-again Christians. Amen. Amen. Exciting. Amen. And we're not only seeing people converted, we're seeing hundreds upon hundreds of people baptized as new believers. And we're training these pastors and their leaders how to reach children and love these children to Jesus. Truly God is doing a miracle through all of their hard work and shared work in the KLGN. Uh, every month, Pastor Petra sends me a report about what God is doing in Cambodia. And my heart just erupts in joy and praise to God. <laughs> I see all the salvations and all the baptisms and all the leaders trained. And I see all the lives that are being changed and healings that are going on. I mean that uh, and I go, God, thank you so much for allowing me to come to Cambodia and work with these amazing Christians here. Amen. 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 This. What we are seeing today is what I dreamed of many yesterdays ago. And 
I dream that God would raise up a movement of pastors and leaders who would reach this nation. And through our partnership with Pastor Sophia and the amazing staff here, God is giving me the deepest desire of my heart. I want heaven to be filled with Cambodians. <laughs> Amen. 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 But I have even greater news for you. As amazing as it is what God is doing now, as grateful as I am for what God is doing now, I have great news for you. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I believe that with all my heart. God used Paul to write these words in Ephesians. Paul said these words. He said, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly even beyond what we ask or think. But look, Paul, Ban to say in the canon, episode to book the way called him a pay ban chant, prayer, rabo yung, kuchi prayer, they act poor, who pick a nuts man doll, who pick a cut doll, rabo yung to did. There are still thousands upon thousands of beautiful Cambodian people yet to receive Jesus. Min chun chit kmai, rob mern, rob sign, rob linnet. And I believe together we will plant hundreds of churches. And we will see thousands of Cambodians come to faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The best is yet to come. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now today I want to talk to you. How to how for you to live the best life possible for Jesus. I want to train you and teach you today how to live the best life possible for Jesus. See, I'm not only a pastor, I'm a father of five children. My wife and I have been blessed to have five. We have five adult children now. And we have two beautiful grandchildren. And this morning already we talked to two of our children. They live back in America. But inside of me, I have a tremendous desire to see every one of my children and grandchildren live the best life possible here on earth. I have this intense love for my children. And for my grandchildren. I want I want them to have the best career. I want them to have the best marriage. I want them to have the best friendships. I want them to have the best relationship with God they can have. I want 
want them to be financially blessed and have the best life they can have. I want them to have the best understanding of how much God loves them and cares about them. I have such an intense love for my children. I pray for them, I call them, I text them, I Facebook them. I try to stay in touch with them so that I can coach them, encourage them, and counsel them. Amen. Amen. But there is someone who has the same heart that I have. There's someone who gave me the heart that I have. And that's God, my heavenly Father. How I feel about my children. And what I want for my children. That's how your heavenly Father feels about you. And that's what our heavenly Father wants for you. Your Father loves you with an intense, passionate love. He loves you when you're good. He loves you when you're bad. He loves you when you're in church. And he loves you wherever you're at. Your heavenly Father is not mad at you. He's in love with you. And because he loves you with such an intense desire, he sent Jesus to you. He sent Jesus to us. He sent his very best to us. So that we can have the best life possible on earth and eternal life. Now Jesus made it clear why he came to earth. And in chapter 10 of John, we know the scripture well. He said in John 10, verse 10. He said, the thief purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he, he's talking about Satan here. Satan wants to do three things. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And because I travel all over the world, I, I see Satan at work in the world I go to. I just came from Africa. And even in Africa, we see people being killed and destroyed because of disease that could be prevented. But there's violence and corruption in so many governments around the world. But Jesus came with a different purpose. He came with a purpose, he says in the book of John. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. I came that, another text says, I came that they might have a rich and satisfying life. But, 
Uh, so that's the heart of God toward you. He wants you to have life and life abundantly. And that's why I lead the life-giving network in India and work with Sophia here in Cambodia. We want to, we want every person we want each one of you to have the abundant life that Jesus Christ died for you to have and now I want you to understand that I'm going to teach you now how to get God's guidance and direction so that you can live the best life possible. And it doesn't matter where you are at now, you can start from where you are now to live the best life possible. Turn in your Bibles with me to, to Psalm 32. This is one of my favorite Psalms in the entire Bible. Uh, and it was written by a great man of God by the name of David. He was a man after God's own heart. He was both a mighty warrior. He was a great worshiper. He was an excellent king. But even great people make mistakes and sin. And and most people think that David wrote this psalm as a declaration of receiving forgiveness from committing adultery. Here's a great man with a great love for God. But when he saw a beautiful woman bathing without any clothes on, he sent for her and committed adultery. And then he killed her husband. And he tried to pretend that it didn't happen. But God wanted David to have the best life possible. So he didn't let him get away with pretending it never happened. And his spirit began to convict David that something was wrong in his life. And when he writes this psalm, he is, he is celebrating that this God who loves him even though he sinned greatly and made a mess of his life will totally and completely forgive him and give him the best life possible. And I find tremendous joy and hope in this text. This is what David says. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven. 
whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleansed of guilt. Whose lives are lived in complete honesty. He says, when I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away. And I groaned all day long. Day and night your hand of discipline was heavy upon me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat but God did not let up on David sometimes God uses pain and guilt to get us so we can have the best life possible he, he wasn't trying to destroy or hurt David. He was trying to help David. Unconfessed sin hurts us. Guilt and shame can destroy us. But confession and honesty and repentance restore us and free us to live the best life possible. And David found that out. He says in this text, in verse chapter 5, Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And then he says, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Here's what I want you to know. To live your best life, you must let God deal with your past your guilt and your shame. Instead of trying to hide secret sin in your life and going around feeling guilty and ashamed hoping no one finds out, uh, you can run right up to your heavenly father and you can be totally honest with him and you can say oh father, father, father I have sinned I've done things I should have never done I've been in rebellion to you I have hurt you I've hurt myself and I have hurt others please forgive all my sin and help me to live a new life and you can rise up from that moment and say just like David my sin is all forgiven all, all 
Oh, my guilt is gone. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus died for us. So we can have forgiveness of our sins. The best life in includes being an honest life. You admit your sins to God. You confess your sins to God. You, you believe He loves you. He's for you. And when you sin, you don't run away and hide. And hope that God never finds you. No, because, because Jesus proved that God loves us. You can run right into his arms. And you can experience exactly what David did even though he sinned greatly. Amen. 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 God can give us the best life because he can deal with the past life. Number two. God gives us the best life because he's present in our everyday troubles. He's not just the God of our past. He's a very present God right now in the midst of our life. And by keeping an honest relationship with him, you're inviting him to be right in the middle of everything that goes on in your life. This is what David says in verse 6. He said, therefore let all the godly pray to you while there is still time. Verse 6. That they may not drown in the floodwaters of judgment. Then he says in verse 7. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. How is David living the best life now? He, he has God's power and presence right in the middle of everything going on in his life. And he's seen God's mighty hand involved in every day of his life. Let me tell you what happened to me. six weeks ago, I was in a horrible car accident. I was in a big car with my sister. And we were driving down a road in America. As the sun was setting down. And as we were driving, we were driving right into the sunset. And we were driving 85 to 95 kilometers per hour. 
But because the sun was setting, she, she could not see that a farmer had left a tractor in the road. So my sister came up to the tractor and she, and, she, and she never even saw it. And we hit it with all of our force. No breaks. And all of a sudden, the car I'm in is flying through the air. And, and now I'm upside down in the car. And the whole front of the car has been ripped off. And I landed on the, with the top of the car on the ground. And I was in the car upside down. <laughs> and the seatbelt was the only thing holding me in the car. And my, my sister was upside down and she was behind the steering wheel. And I looked at my sister. And all I could say was this. It was my shortest, most powerful prayer ever. And I knew that the car could explode. I wasn't sure whether my sister was going to die. So I said these three words. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. The car was completely crushed all around me. But the farmer who left the tractor in the road came running over to our car and he was able to open my door and pull me to safety and he asked me a question are you hurt the car was destroyed I had no injuries I had no injuries. I, I could have died. I, I could have lost my ability to walk. I was able to shut off the car. And then we were able to pull my sister out of the car. And she walked away with only some bruises around her body. God saved my life. He's still helping me to live the best life. He has filled my mouth with songs of victory. He's not just the God of my past. He is a very present help in Time of Amen. 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 Woo! Woo! But, but David does not stop there in this song. He doesn't stop there. And he makes a statement in the next text. And this is what he says. He's not saying that it's him saying it. But He's saying that the Lord is saying this. 
So he's quoting what the Lord is saying. Now please hear this. This is what God is saying. Through the writer David. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. Yeah, verse 8. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. He says in verse 9, Do not be like a senseless horse or mule that needs a bit and bridle to keep it under control. Then in verse 10, he says, Many... In verse 11 then, verse 10, Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad. So All you who obey him shout for joy. All whose hearts are pure. Now I want you to understand this. David is saying something. You have a God who wants to guide you you have a God who wants to guide you and counsel you and direct you. You don't have to try to figure it all out all by yourself. You, you have a God who knows you better than yourself. You have a God who knows what's best for you better than you do. You have a God who knows the best person for you to marry. You have a God who knows the best job or best career for your life. You have a God who knows the best ministry you can have for Jesus Christ. You have a God who knows what the future holds. He's the only person who knows what's going to happen in the future and he's on our team. Our God loves us. And he promises to guide and direct and advise and counsel us. People who do not know Jesus Christ not only don't have a savior, they don't have a shepherd. They have no one to guide their life. I'm so grateful that God has guided my life. Now I want you to look at me. Just look right at me. How many would agree I'm older than you? Come on. How many would say I'm older than you? How, how many would say my hair is grayer, even whiter than yours? <laughs> Amen. I have been following Jesus 
for 45 years that's more than some of you've been alive three times four <laughs> times more than some of you've been alive when i tell you god promises to guide your life I'm not talking about something that's a theory. I have lived it for 45 years. God led me to the right person to marry. Amen. Amen. And when I met her, I was engaged to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> But God had the woman I was engaged to break the engagement. And then God told me the woman I was engaged to was not the best person for my life. That she was the best person for my life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I, when I went to college, I wanted to become an economics and a businessman. But Jesus came to me and said, I haven't created you to master economics. I created you to preach the gospel to many nations. He knew what I was created for better than I knew myself. He knew where I should live. He knew that I could plant three churches in that area. He knew I could start a global ministry from that area. And he has blessed me financially by building houses in that area. He has given me the best life possible. He has made his word come true in my life. But I had to believe that he knew best. I had to trust him. And I had to surrender to him. Now in this text, David says, don't be like a stubborn horse or mule. How many of you have ever had a horse or mule? Any of you have ever had a horse? A few of you? Uh, all of them have cows. Cows. Okay. <laughs> well, cows can be stubborn too. But So I had a I had a horse when I was a boy. And I like to ride horse. And I would go to my horse and get on my horse. But my horse did not like for me to ride it. So it would go like this all the time. And it would resist me. And it would fight with me. Then it would try to bite my legs. But finally I would get it to go. And then it would run so fast, it would try to throw me off. So we'd ride all the way to the end of the field. I'm 
out there. Out there. And then we turn it around. <laughs> and he went like a flying bullet. He flew across <laughs> the field. <laughs> I mean, I was just, I was bouncing up and down everywhere. <laughs> and then when we got to the barn he would raise up in the air and drop me right in the manure pile but look mục we lang how to let can yum out let can look at me not the best horse. I don't want to be like that for Jesus. I don't want him to have to jerk me around. I don't want to fight Jesus. I want to surrender to Jesus. I want to be someone he looks at and says, yes, I will lead him. And he trusts me. He believes in me. He lets me lead him. He's someone I can guide into the best life possible. I have been able to live the best life possible because I've surrendered to the lordship and the guidance of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to give you some scriptures here. I want you to hear again from the word of God how committed God is to guiding your life. I want you to write these scriptures down. And when you need direction and you need guidance, I want you to read these scriptures over and over again. The Bible says that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. When I read the word of God, it helps me surrender my heart. So Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says this. This is what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do. And He will show you what path to take. Amen. Amen. God wants you to make the right choice. Now, if I was trying to drive in Cambodia, I would be very lost. When I go to many nations, I use GPS. I don't know if I could even make that work here in Cambodia. <laughs> when I pull up to an intersection, and a, a road goes here, and here, and here, and here, and here, I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. And life can feel like that. Amen. Life can feel like that. But there's someone who knows what turn to take. He knows the right path. And he wants to show it to you. And God wants to be involved in every single detail of your life. 
Your school, your money, your business, your marriage, your friendships, even your pain. Look at what I want to read this scripture to you. Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm, yeah. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. And he delights in every detail of their life. He delights in every detail of their life. There's nothing in your life that God doesn't care about. Many times I have to go to big areas, big big uh, cities. And because I know God loves me, and he promises to help me, when I'm driving a car, I pray. God, please help me find a parking spot. Please help me find a parking spot. This is a big city and I feel lost in it. Please help me, God. It seems like such a small thing. But God has promised. He cares about every detail of our life. And so many times in my life, I come up to where I need to go, and someone is just pulling out. And, and he even provides a parking spot for me. God loves to show his greatness. By doing even the littlest things for us. And two more scriptures and we close today. Isaiah 48, 17. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is good for you. And leads you along the path that you should follow. And Psalm 48, 14. For that is what God is like. I'll let you get there. He is our God forever and ever. And the Bible says, and he will guide us until we die. There is not one day of your life that God will not guide. I am older than you. I may get to see Jesus before you. 
ហើយនៅពេលដែលខ្ញុំនៅលើផែនដែរ I will watch over you. I will direct you. You can trust me to lead you into the best life possible. So tonight, if you come back tonight, I will teach you how he does it. I will teach you from the word of God and from my life experience the five ways God guides us and how God uses all five of these things to give us the best life possible. And I would love for you to come to tell you the rest of the story. Amen. Amen. Do you believe God loves you? Do you believe God can forgive you? And your past can be all forgiven. Do you believe he can be present with you no matter how bad life gets? Do you believe? Do you believe he wants to guide you into the best pathway for your life? So stand with me now. And so Peter will lead us in prayer. លោកអ្នកខ្ញុំមកដល់ត្រត់ថ្ងៃអាឡើយនេះគឺដោយព្រោះ <coughs> គឺដោយព្រោះព្រះអង្គណែនាំទាំងអស់ព្រះអង្គ <coughs> សំគមសង្ស័យបើណាហ៊ិនទទួលស្គាល់ចេះទទួលស្គាល់ថាខ្ញុំមានមនុស្សដែលល្អល្អនៅក្នុងជីវិតរបស់ខ្ញុំរត
chong ơi lục nè đặt đài lên lưới chật Gia vị Mơ tư gia vị Bà ông Trông cư chi bà ông mà chạy mà Bà ông mà chạy Bà đi dừng chư lưu bà ông Bà đi dừng tật tuôn bà ông Dừng tật tuôn bà ông Ôi miên tuôn là tí bí nông chí bất bảo dương Tí môi bà ông chi bà ông sẵn cừu Dừng tật tuôn bà ông Bà ông lại tí chi bà ông sẵn cừu Tí bí bí đi dừng tật tuôn chư lưu bà ông Dừng tật tuôn bà ông chi bà ông mà chạy Lord, Lord Mà chạy Mà chạy mình đi thân nè cực cực nè đực nôm nè trụ trai Nè bác Chí bất bảo dương bí Chí bất bảo dương bí bí chí lãn mũi Bà ông cách chừng cốt chí bất bảo dương Bà ông xung Đất nôm chí bất bỏ dương chí ngày này Đúng chất là bỏ dương cứ ai bỏ ơn cử rồng đi Gia vệ Đã đánh nơi lớn chất hay dương chí điên gia vệ Mơ tơ gia vệ, mơ tơ gia vệ 